Okay, y'all, I'm gonna get into Blade Runner 2049. So Blade Runner 2049 opened on October 6th to general audiences around the world. This movie shows you what you can do with $150 million. Any idea where I could find him? Your police plan on taking me in. I would much prefer that to the alternative. From the very first shots of this film, I knew that I was in a completely different world from the original Blade Runner. Now, not like they're abandoning the storylines, but it's a 30 year different and the world can change an awful lot in 30 years and this film takes that into account. So a lot of what was the splashy neon has been dulled down. This is a world post environmental crisis and the combination of cinematography, the artistic direction, the visual effects, the special effects. Screen director Denis Villeneuve, who brought us the film Arrival, does a wonderful job of leading this team in the creation of a fantastic film. I mean, this film looks like it should be hanging in a gallery somewhere. This film is like a slow seduction, slowly peeling back layer after layer, revealing a history that's been hidden from us for 30 years since the original film. It takes its time filling in those gaps for us as we slowly have revealed by character after character on this everyman journey through this fabulous world. And the scale of this world is absolutely mind-blowing. I remember at one point in the film being absolutely blown away with the score by Benjamin Walfish and Hans Zimmer as we're looking at just waterfalls and what I thought was just gonna be this majestic setting and it turned out we were going to the garbage dump. The garbage dump in this movie is breathtakingly beautiful. The film also has a pretty powerful message focusing on the idea that leaps in civilization are often brought about by the exploitation of labor that is ultimately disposable. And that's the whole nature of the Blade Runner job is to retire these machines who have happen to have uh, consciousness. Also, the screenplay is pretty amazing, often with dialogue that is quite poetic. This film brings back Hampton Fancher, who wrote the original screenplay for Blade Runner. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears. and Michael Green, who worked with Ridley Scott on Alien Covenant. You hear that? What? Nothing. No birds, no animals, nothing. Ridley Scott was given a credit as executive producer. The film stars Ryan Gosling, who gives an amazing performance. That performance was only possible because this film is willing to take its time and linger on the character in moments where we see them going through things that are deeply emotional and moving and psychologically disturbing, right? There's a wonderful use of patterns in this film. Another thing that I noticed in the film was the use of the female form, first of all, most of the main cast are played by people who could likely be identified as women, and the film is constantly surrounding us with these colossal women, either as these taunting holographic images or these colossal stoned ruins in the desert and abandoned spaces in the world of this film. The film has its touches of splash and kitsch. There's a scene in Las Vegas where we get to watch the a holographic performance of Elvis Presley, and we actually stop to listen to the song. There are a few clunky placements, one in particular for a well-known beverage company, which was really odd in a world where it doesn't seem like anyone even eats actually. Certainly the film has its flaws. It doesn't quite interrogate the ideology that the world needs to be divided up into classes to be able to function. But overall, the film is just stunning from its first image to its final image in the falling snow, which in some ways is a nod to the original film. I highly recommend you go see Blade Runner 2049 and then let me know what you think about it. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And